Villeneuve Palace, a former residence of Polish royal and aristocratic families, a meeting point for the Occident and the Orient, creating a magnificent blend of architecture, art and natural surroundings. Today, a favourite tourist location ideal to contemplate history, culture and nature, but also a museum and a scientific institution. By means of research carried out in Villeneuve Palace Museum, we trace information that enables reconstruction of the past in its various aspects. Our attention focuses not only on extant material evidence, architecture, painting, sculpture, textiles, but also on the intangible, the lives of subsequent Villeneuve owners. In order to deepen our knowledge, we need to conduct in-depth, interdisciplinary research and to take a broad perspective. The 17th century Polish court of Jan Sobieski III was a multinational centre. During Sobieski's reign, contacts with European courts were maintained, not only for obvious political reasons, but also through active artistic channels. After Sobieski's death, his successors continued his political course, but at the same time they distributed the king's belongings and memorabilia. All of King Sobieski's children became citizens of Europe. The widowed Queen Mary Casimir spent 15 years in Rome, while Sobieski's sons, Prince Alexander and Prince Constanti, travelled across the continent. They too ended up spending some years in Rome and left their mark on a number of the city's monuments. The eldest, Prince Jakob, became a relative of the Habsburg family. The king's granddaughter, Maria Clementina Sobieska, married Jacob Stuart III, the pretender to the British throne. They lived in the Roman palace Muti. What was their fate? How to understand their paths? How to trace their extant memorabilia? Marie Casimir died in France. The king's daughter, Teresa Cunegunda, married Maximilian Emmanuel Wittelspark, elector of Bayern. She lived in Venice, Brussels and Munich. As for Jakob, he circulated between Rotswaf, Oava and Zulkiev, while Constanti between Rotswaf and Zulkiev. But what happened next? Little can be told for sure without consulting written evidence. Given an easier access to archival treasures distributed throughout Europe, we would be able to obtain many more pieces of information, highly significant, yet to this day undisclosed. Set in a proper historical context, a seemingly unimportant fact may become a spectacular revelation. Let us try to make use of the benefits of contemporary technologies by gathering information we obtain from, for example, biochemical research and spectral analyses. Can the mere tinge of antique silk or of a carpet made as a gift help us discover the truth about their origins? Have we really thoroughly acquainted ourselves with the dyeing techniques of the old Europe? What else can we learn about the origin of an object and its real story on the basis of currently conducted identifications? Can contemporary knowledge help us answer such questions? Thanks to the progress in modern research techniques, we start to ask ourselves more and more detailed questions and analyse more and more complex processes. We are even able to check into which molecules a dyeing substance will be broken down, e.g. in an antique fabric if it is destroyed by invisible to the naked eye bacteria strains that populate an antique object. Our research goes deeper and deeper, thus forcing us to solve newer and newer puzzles. Sometimes simply the derivative compounds of a dyeing substance change and as a result, the dye we deal with becomes totally different. If the results of identification show the presence of Kermes acid, it is obvious that the dye came from warm regions of southern Europe. The presence or absence of certain substances in chromatography results may be an evidence of the owner's wealth or just a clever camouflage that imitates the shade of an expensive dye. This knowledge may change our opinion about the owners and make us expand our research to include other unexpected areas and directions. Let us have a look at the fabrics in the king's bedroom, the oldest part of the Villeneuve Palace. It is a beautiful shade of blue. In many royal residences, silk fabrics dyed with indigo fade away exactly this way, turning into soft green. 
But why are other silk fabrics purchased in the same period of time for the Villeneuve mansion and placed in the king's antechamber dark bottle green today? After all, the same dyeing substances were identified in the dyes. And on the day of purchase, the fabrics looked exactly the same. There are more and more questions, and potential answers to them seem more and more interesting. Therefore, let us search for unknown stories and undiscovered secrets. Let us use our best knowledge and skills. Let us employ contemporary technologies and equipment. Who knows what else we can learn about families that rule the old Europe and about personal relationships between them thanks to state-of-the-art research methods and knowledge preserved in the archives.